Welcome to Aesop Community Church for serving and giving the kids. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrates the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious God's future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the charming blood. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and the earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We are expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to leave this place wider, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We are meant to... Wait, did I already hear? Did I already read that? We, expect, we accept God's best, lean on Him for daily direction, and resolve to renew our minds and surrender our, our hearts to His Word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise, and the blessing of hearing the Word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instruction, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus. His death, burial, and resurrection are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ, encourage those who do not know him personally, and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at Aesop Community Church where serving and giving begins.
blessings down for those who came out, those who are listening. Bless this time now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it is indeed a, another opportunity to preach here at Asaw Community Church where serving and giving begins. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about being in the house of the Lord. Or, or maybe I should just make it sound like I'm excited. I don't know. I, you know, I think that when growing up, you know, people would say it and they would say it and, and it felt like they meant it. I'm excited. And I was excited Amen. when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I just say it so cavalier, you know. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. And I don't know if you have to put emphasis on it for people to believe that you're really excited. But if you know that you're excited, I think that's pleased enough to God. So, again, I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord to preach another Saturday night. My uh, week has been uh, eventful. As, as, as always, if you are constantly communicating or talking to the Lord, you will find yourself always observing as you go about your day. And my day is always filled with observation. On this week, I, Lord allowed me to travel to Baltimore to see my mother and check in on my sister and do Tuesday town hall from Robin Evans and Michael Evans' home on Tuesday night. And I drove back. And there are so many things going on in the atmosphere that you have to constantly be in prayer or be in thought or be in communication with the Lord because at any time something could, could happen or transpire. Today I went down to support Brother Roger Penix as he was the keynote speaker at the Youth Against Violence. Not only did he give, give, do a good job and had a good word for those young kids, I was very disappointed in the lack of support and turnout by the people who created the very children that we were trying to help. That was sad in itself. I, there were over 30 children who are, are caught up in the juvenile system, and this program gives them an opportunity to change their life before they are incarcerated. And, and Chief Sparks and his team of police officers and Sheriff Pound, they are making it a mandate that they go into the community and touch and affect these children so that they can have an alternative to a life in the penal system. And today was graduation. They had eight weeks of, uh, of teaching and instruction since today was graduation. But I did not see fathers. I did not see families. I didn't see anyone cheering in support of these young children who need guidance and protection and, and people uh, uh, other than law enforcement to have some type of authority in their life. And, and I think that we're living in a time that if we do not know this word, that we have nothing tangible to offer them in way of changing or conforming their minds to something, something more spiritual, something more uh, prevalent to allow them to be more successful in life. And some of these kids do not know. And, 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 and although they graduated today, I don't know what the numbers are, but some of them will. Because one came back who it affected him and he made a change in his life for the better. And he said he was one of five and his other four brothers had all been incarcerated or currently incarcerated. His father's incarcerated. And he didn't want his mother to have all of her children uh, incarcerated. He's doing the best he can to, to stay on the good side of the law. And so with that being said and done, um, I was going to continue uh, the series in sowing. We have been talking about that for the last several weeks. And um, the Lord dropped in my spirit the other night that we should just be thankful. And I just kept hearing that word in my spirit, thankful, and I was like, well, Lord, I'm still dealing with so, and I think I have maybe one more sermon in that, that series, and, and I, I went down to my desk, and I, I couldn't find anything, and I, I looked over some things, and I just nothing resonated with me, and I felt the Holy Spirit nudge me and said, I said, thankful. Mm. And when you are obedient to what the word of God and the and, and, and the Holy Spirit, then you will find success because you are operating in accordance to what God will is, what he wants, what he desires, not what you want. So I could have forced in a sermon on sowing or giving or, or whatever it was on my mind, but, but the Holy Spirit just nudged me into this direction of, of being thankful. And, and what is thankful? Mm. Being thankful is knowing God for yourself. 
That's what thankful is. Knowing God because you know that when you know him, you have the ability to do what? All things through Christ who does what? Strengthens you. So I kept hearing thankful in my spirit. And, and we should know as we look around at the blessings that he has bestowed upon us that we all should be thankful. At some particular level, no matter where you find yourself financially or, or job-wise, if you are still where you are, then you ought to be thankful right there. Yes. Because in order to go further, you have to be thankful for where you are. Yes. Nobody is ever thankful, and I hear this all the time. When I get to this level, I'm going to do these things. I, I disagree, because if you're going to do it at that level, you would have done it at this level. Amen. If you're going to preach that way, I'm going to preach whether it's two or two thousand. It doesn't make no difference to me because I'm called to do what? Preach. I'm going to preach no matter what season, whether it's in season or out of season, because that's what I've been called to do. Amen. So thankful comes from understanding where you are. Amen. And what is prayer? Prayer is nothing more than a request to God to do what? Answer the very thing that you are asking. And why would you ask God of something if you do not know him? Because if you don't know him, you don't even know it's going to happen because you don't know him. But when you do, you know that there is a good chance, a strong chance, strong possibility that he will do what? Answer. Oh, yes. And that's why you pray. Amen. And people rejoice. Why do they rejoice? They rejoice in knowing that God is capable and able. So what do we are? Where are we? We are praying, we are thankful, and we are what? Rejoicing. And why do we do those three things? Because all of them come from the blessings of God. Amen. So tonight, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verses 16, 17, and 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16, 17, and 18. And this is Paul again. We are a new church plan. And I don't know if you've been paying attention, but God is still dealing with us as a new church plan. Why? Because those who are here, those who are watching, we have to be equipped for what's coming. Mm -hmm. We are the foundation of this church. No matter whatever happens in life, it is going to be based upon the foundation we build. So if we build a good, solid foundation full of love and serving and giving and people that come through the doors embrace that, you know what happens then. It continues to grow and manifest and that begins to spread out into the community. Why? Because people are hurting. People are looking for something to say, I, 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 can, I can understand that. That helps me. That is beneficial. And that is definitely moving in the direction that I I believe God wants for us. Amen. Amen. And as a church, that's what we ought to do. We just come here to get this information. But the battle is on the other side of the door. I cannot stress that enough. It is not in here, but it is out there. Only in here is to prepare to go out there. Just like today, we will prepare to go to present a word to those young children because we have learned in here what is necessary for them to hear so that they don't end up on the wrong side of the reason why they were there in the first place. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. So my sermon text comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. And it reads, verse 16, rejoice always. Yes. Rejoice oh. always. Pray without ceasing. And in verse 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. My sermon titled is simply, By His Will, We Are Thankful. By His Will, We Are Thankful. So, what is Paul saying to us yet another Saturday night here at Esau? Well, you have to understand that, y'all, that Paul had planted these churches, and at this particular time, the, the new Christians were under prosecution, and, and, and they, were, they were drifting back into the old ways, and, and there was so much going on that it was easy for them to, to revert back to what they knew instead of holding on to what was coming. See, change is difficult for people because whatever change comes is scary, it's not really defined, it's not mapped out, and therefore you like to revert back 
to what you know, your comfort level. And Paul has to come and through these letters encourage them to keep moving forward because the food that I am giving you is for your soul. So, we find ourselves in, in, in verse 16 where it says to rejoice always. If anyone should understand joy, it should be us. Yes. If anyone should understand joy, it should be those who know Christ for themselves. It should be us as Christians. We should have joy. We shouldn't be just living in happy land. We should have joy. Yeah. And what is joy? Joy is something on the inside. Yeah. It can't be shaken. It can't be moved because your joy is connected to he who created joy. Yeah. So therefore, joy has to be deeper than happiness because happiness to me can be just like clothes. Put on something new, you feel good. Put on something old, you might feel bad. But that joy comes through from the inside to the outside. That, that joy, no matter what the trial or tribulation in your life, no matter you're up or down, joy perseveres because you know who created the joy. Yes. So it says to rejoice. It doesn't say sometimes. It says Always, meaning always be in the state of what? Joy. Yes. Rejoicing, knowing that God is able to bring you through the very thing that you were what early doing, praying about. Praying about. Yes, yes, yes. Joy is anticipation. We anticipate joy because we have already dealt with so many perils in life. Our joy is, is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Joy is deeper than happiness. Joy is something you feel on the inside and it's not taken by anybody else it's because joy is yours. It is your joy. It is my joy. It is personal because your knowledge of him connects you to the joy because you know you can get through. That's when you experience joy. You experience joy when a situation presents itself. You know that he who created you will carry you through the very thing that you're praying about. That's why it says to rejoice always because he's always there. He's always there. I, I might not be there for you in your darkest moment, but he will. You won't call my name when you're about to go in surgery, but you will call his. And the joy inside of you allows you to get through the very trial that you are anticipating. But God is a comforter to bring you through. That's why it says to rejoice always. No matter what else, it looks like outside, inside, we are dealing with what? Joy. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Always. But how can you rejoice if you don't know he who created? Rejoicing. Jesus. Rejoice comes from understanding that no matter what's going on, God is in control and sovereign. Yes. I can help you with some things, but I cannot get you to where you need to be until you open up the book for yourself and understand he who gives you the joy. Yes. Job said it best. Although he slay me yet, will I serve him? Meaning, no matter what goes on around me, no matter what my body or my mind goes through, as long as I have a clear thought, I'm going to serve him because I know he will bring me through. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. So you have to know him to understand why he says, why Paul says in verse 16, rejoice always. You remember it said in Corinthians, uh, uh, Paul said that no matter what state I'm in, whether I'm in prison, whether I'm in my home, whether I'm on my walk, on my journey, no matter what state I'm in, I have learned to be content. Learning means you have already gone through the one thing that you needed to correct to find contentment. See, we, 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 we go through some things, and until we get to that level of understanding, those things wear us down. But when you get on the other side and understand that joy prevails no matter what the circumstance is, whether it's adverse or in your favor, God is still pushing you forward. Why? Because at the end, he has to have a will. And the will is the plan for your life. So we should do what? Rejoice. Always rejoice is a part of your walk. Rejoice is what brings you closer to him. Rejoice is what people see. They'll say to you, how can you rejoice when you have just been fired? Because I know that God has another plan for me. And this door closed. He has to open another one because he wouldn't be God if I'm not fired and then I'm home. 
He does not call. God is saying, let me take you through some things so that you can learn to serve me in season and out of season. That's why it says to just rejoice always. Yes. Yes. Rejoice always involves action and attitude, knowing that you can and you will prevail. Mm. But you got to know it for yourself. Verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean you just walk around all day with your eyes closed and praying. That's not praying with, without ceasing. Praying without ceasing means that you are always in constant communication with the Creator. Your, your mind is always centered on Him. And, and, and see, what happens is, like, sometimes when you drive, if you've ever been in a situation where you almost got hit, but some kind of way God will move the car around that circumstance, and you really shout out, thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to get through that part of danger. Why? Because you were already connected to Him. You had already been praying, maybe in the, the morning hour, but you were talking to God, and then when something happened, you were easily able to access prayer because you already had them in your thoughts. Amen. Amen. Pray without ceasing. See, people who don't know them don't understand that. They, they might think that you're crazy. Mm -hmm. But you must understand that your life depends on your ability to pray through the very things that you may be struggling with. Mm -hmm. mm. Pray without season. It's not a constant communication with God just with your eyes closed and praying, but it's it's a heart and mind connection and the thoughts. You know how it is when you fall in love with somebody and, and, and it's like you, you, you're you not walking around all day with them butterflies, but every once in a while something happens, something maybe that person calls you or you see a picture or you hear a song and it makes your heart flutter because there is love. That's the same thing with this prayer without ceasing is, is that is that, 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 that you know that you can access him at any time through prayer. So pray without ceasing. And it's the same thing. It's all relationship. This is all relationship. And you can't understand none of this if you don't have a relationship with him. Amen. Every day, we should start our day with prayer and we should end our day with prayer and constantly talking to the Lord throughout. Why? Because constantly we are in search for something to rejoice about because there's something going to come into our life. And it's just like, it's like the other day, wondering, Lord, you know there's some things that I need to take care of. And then I get a call mm -hmm. to do a show. Mm -hmm. Now, that wasn't on the books, but it's just me talking to him, what I'm going through, what I'm going through. I said, Lord, you just, I just need you to drop a couple dimes right here. Then I get a call, and, and then the day I get a call, are you available to do a, a couple days? And I'm like, yes, I'm available, because he knew my circumstance. I'm still talking to him, but I still got joy, even when I didn't see it, I'm still rejoicing, and I'm still praying without ceasing, because there's a need that I have, and only he can fix it. I don't have the ability to get myself through. I don't have the ability to wake myself up. I don't have no ability other than to trust him and then rejoice in knowing that he's going to do it. Yes, yes. Prayer gives the circumstance or the situation over in your life to him. Prayer takes that situation or that circumstance and you just give it over to him because you have trust in the Father. He can handle the very thing that you can't handle. There's no sense in you struggling trying to change somebody or fix something. Why don't you just pray about it and rejoice knowing that the prayer that you send up is already done. It, it, the problem is, is we want instant gratification. We want it to be instantly and it's not going to be instantly. In some cases, it's in his will because sometimes if he gives you some things early, you might not know how to handle them. I was listening to Roger talking about the amount of money he made at 21 and so did the other gentleman who made a large portion of money at his early age and they both said they squandered the money. Why? Because they weren't prepared for the amount that they received because they hadn't had the training and the knowledge but in time in preparation and moving forward, they became not only successful, but the things that they lost, they got back. And the second time around, they were able to, you understand what I'm saying? This is all life is. Yes, yes. That's all life is. All life is is, is paying attention to the test mm -hmm. and stop failing the test when God is the answer and he's giving you the Holy Spirit to get you through. Yes, he did. Yes. But no, 
We, 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 got, we got our own mind. And, and this is what I, I know that I can talk my way into this and I can make this right. You can't. You can't fix what God is preparing to maybe remove out of your life. That's right. And sometimes you've got to just lose some things to gain some things. I, I don't know about you, but I know personally about that. I know about losing some things to gain some even better things. It's like Job. People say, why don't you curse him and die? Look what he's done to you. He's taken everything from you, but he persevered. And not only did he get it back, he got more than he had. You understand? That's what your faith will do. That's what rejoicing through trials will do. That's what praying without ceasing will do. It will give you the strength to look adversity in the eye and know that God is in the midst of the very adverse thing you're going through. Glory. Glory, God. Mm -hmm. yeah. But today, you know, we have to have, I don't know what the word is, or in the city vernacular or slangs and so when people don't really want to grasp the word or don't want to study, they come up with catchphrases that take the place of the scripture. See, I'm just going to tell you to pray without ceasing, meaning no matter what situation you have, I'm just going to pray without ceasing. But, but modern, modern society says, Jesus, take the wheel. It's the same thing. But it sounds more cliche. It sounds more, you know, something more modern. Just Jesus, take the wheel. I get what they say, Jesus, take the wheel. But really what they say is, I need to be praying. Through this situation, because it's hand, this situation, I can't handle it all. So, so Jesus take the wheel. But all I'm telling you, if you want Jesus to take the wheel, to just pray. He already has the wheel. He already knows what's ahead of you. You don't know it, but you got to trust him. He's going to get you through. So we have to rejoice in knowing he's able and give thanks after he has brought us through the very thing he is able to do. Man, listen, you can make this walk with the Lord as complicated as you want, or you can make it as simple as it is. It is very simple. It is believing, accepting, and moving forward. That's it. And then hearing these things and just applying them one at a time. What are we going to do? We're going to rejoice. Why? Because no matter what situation comes your way, God is in control. So we want to rejoice. When we're rejoicing, why do we have the ability to rejoice? Because we know we are connected to a higher source because we are doing what? Praying without ceasing. Yes. What does that all mean? It's your walk. Yes. That's what it means. It means your walk. It means how you maneuver your life and your day. If you get up in the morning rejoicing, you'll go to bed rejoicing. If you get up in the morning anguish, you'll go to bed in anguish. If you get up denying, you'll go to bed denying. I don't know about you, but my granddaughter and I, we wake up every day singing. We, it doesn't make a difference how long we were asleep. We just wake up and we just, and we, she can wake up in five minutes and have a conversation because there's a joy that she has on the inside. There's something about her, her room that makes her comfortable. There's something about knowing when she go downstairs, there's going to be some food on the table. She's always in a joyful state of mind. Why? Because her parents and her family are constantly in communication with God to make sure that her life And those children today at the Youth Against Violence conference, they don't have that. They wake up differently because nobody is telling them about this Lord right here. Nobody is telling them about Jesus. They may hear it in passing, but it's not implemented in the house. We got to start getting out of our comfort zone and implement the very things that we use for the joy that we have. Stop being selfish with your joy and begin to share it when people ask you, why are you so happy? Or why do you always seem like you're in a good state of mind? Just tell them, it's because the God that I serve. Yes. It's the God that I serve is bringing me through the very thing that I am struggling to get through. And in your human side, you will struggle because that's just part of life. But you must know, as Paul knew, at all times, he will not fail you, and you will find contentment in him, but you got to believe and understand and know him. Amen. And if you know him for yourself, you know that you will persevere. Verse 18 says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for who? It's for you. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So why are you doing the very things that you're doing? You're doing them because it's part of his will through Christ Jesus for you. He died for you. He died 
for me. See, you've got to understand that knowing the love of Jesus Christ and the power of God should allow you to give thanks for what? Everything. That job that you have, don't let that degree fool you. That car you, you drive, don't let that job fool you. That house you live in, don't let that job fool you. That you can, no, it's because of his what? His will. Because you have done what? You have rejoiced and you have prayed for the desires of your heart. And in his will, he gave them to you when he knew you could have them. It's all progression. It's all progression. But again, in our human side, we kind of compare our, our failures. Listen, nobody's expecting you to be perfect. Because if you were perfect, you would have hung on the cross. You're not perfect. But each day, just try to be better. Each day, just make some other changes. Each day that you fail, learn something. Each day that you slip, study some more. I'm telling you, in time, your failures will be eliminated and your successes will be elevated. I didn't write that in my notes, but it sounded good right there. I hope that's recorded. I want to use that again somewhere down the line. See, that's how the Holy Spirit is. He'll jump in and give you what you need right when you need it. Yes, he will. And everything, give thanks. But this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. You should give thanks. And then what should you do when you give thanks? You should go tell somebody how you got through. I love it when Roger tells people about his heart attack because he then has a testimony that he got through the heart attack. Not only the heart attack, but the stroke. He's still here. And there's something that every time he connects with that story, it resonates with the hearer. Matter of fact, the young man next door who had the same type of heart attack didn't want them to invade him, but because Roger got through, he told him, hey, bro, there's nothing wrong with you going through that procedure. You're going to be all right. You understand? That's the reason why God takes us through some things, so we can help somebody else. It's not just for you. Sometimes it's for me. Amen. Amen. But you got to tell somebody. And why would you tell them? You tell them because you are working and operating in the will of God because Christ Jesus died for you. Yes, so we need to give thanks. And thanking God is nothing more than opening up your mouth and saying, I appreciate where I am, what you did to allow me to be where I am. That's all it is. And you ought to be thankful. We all ought to be thankful because somebody did not wake up this morning. I remember as a kid, I said, hear that. He said, somebody did not wake up this morning. Somebody, this is their last day, but I thank God that I still have another opportunity to praise him. So give thanks because you recognize he didn't have to do it. Didn't have to do it, but it was his will. And I'm learning that. And this church is learning that. Why and how? How? Because we operate in his will. It's his plan. It's his plan for the foundation of this church. It is his plan for us to operate, understanding that all praises belong to him. I'm just a servant for him. I'm just doing the job that he has called me to do. But the glory goes to him because what? It's all in him that we get the rejoicing and the praying and we give the thanks because he is the one who allowed us to be here. This ain't my, this ain't, this ain't me. This is God directing the path. All I'm doing is following it. That's it. I didn't find this place. God had me out riding around looking for a location. Met another man of God who said, hey, there's one on this particular place. Man, you understand what I'm saying? It was all part of the will, part of the plan. I didn't know. I didn't know. I just did what? I accepted it, and I was rejoicing knowing that he would give us a location because we needed it. And people ask me, how are we doing? I'm telling you, I'm talking to people now. I talked to a pastor yesterday, and he said churches are closing down, and they're putting their stuff in storage. And he said to me, he said, now, I don't know what your financial situation is, but I just want you to know I like what you're doing. And if for some reason you come up against a situation and you can't stay there, you're more than welcome to come down here and bring your church and operate out of our church. And that should be it. And I said, where God guides, God provides. I'm not worried about that because the, the, the ministry is what we are concerned about. I'm not worried about money. I'm not worried about nothing other than what is the assignment that you have. I'm still rejoicing. Why? And I'm praying without ceasing. Why? Because everything that he has done for Esau, i got to give thanks for. And if I continue to hold on to those, those few commands, God is going to do what? He will bless me through Christ Jesus. We will all be blessed. You understand? Sometimes you just got to be 
around some blessed people to get some residual blessings in your life until you get your life to the level that you understand that you can do the same thing. Amen. Amen. Jacob's father-in-law didn't have to be upset with him. He could have had the same thing. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? I, I feel like I know something. I'm quoting other scriptures now. I'm getting there. Mm. I hope that was right. Somebody on Facebook would tell me, no, that was the wrong father in law. <laughs> and everything give thanks, but this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. His will is good, His will is perfect, and all we have to do is just live and accept it. That's it. The will of God is His plan for you. Listen, listen. We can, we can go back and forth, we can go on and on and on and on. Because everything that is in that book is powerful. Everything in that book is a lesson. Everything in that book helps you. Everything in that book changes. Everything in that book makes you better. Everything in that book gives life. Everything in the book brings back to you the very thing that you need is his grace. It's all in the book. So no matter how this sound, it's never us. It's never a preacher. He is just the orator. He is just presenting it. It's all manifested because God breathed into it. And that's why this book is so good. That's why it has all the answers. That's why it's complete. Because he breathed in it. By his will, we are thankful. We know about rejoicing. We know about praying. We know about being thankful. We understand that the will is part of his plan. So, so what does all of this mean? Here's what it means. In order to rejoice, we must pray and be thankful. You must have a constant oneness between your mind and your heart. Your focus must be on your relationship with God to build the relationship. You must know him for yourself. You must study his word to show what? Yourself will prove. And to know him, you got to learn of him. And you can't depend on someone else if you don't know them. In other words, how can you depend on somebody you don't know? My children know me. They know that if you call me, I'm going to be on time. They know me. I'm a stickler for time. If you're a member of ASAW, you know we start on time. How do you know? Because you know me. You have to know him the same way, better times Then you know me because I can't die for you. I can't take away your sins. I, I'm not going to give one of my children on the altar for you. So what I'm telling you is if you really want to live this, if you really want to be a part of this, if you want to be thankful, if you want to be in this will, all you have to do is rejoice, pray, and give thanks. With the strength of the Holy Spirit, we can accomplish the commands and be assured, as we say, in our welcome, our boundless future. Because in Esau, it's only serving and giving a part of our ministry. That's what we're doing. Serving and giving, and we leave leaving the nonsense to those people who do not know it. Amen. 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 And I dropped those glasses like I threw a period on that. Did you see that? <laughs> did, you, did you see that? Yeah. I threw them down like, now take that and go tell somebody. Amen. God is doing some great things here in the city of Villa Rica. I'm not worried about nothing. I don't care what it looks. See, I did a show with Conyers the other night and the guy said, man, you were funny. How come I don't know you? And I said, same reason I don't know you. <laughs> we just haven't crossed paths. And it's not to be arrogant. I know what he was asking me, but see, we equate success whether or not we know you. We equate success whether about how many people show up. Listen, this ministry is about ministry. We might not have a lot of people to show up on Saturday night, but I got a long list of things that we have done that have blessed this community. Why? Because it's about ministry for us. It's about ministry. It's about preparing it here, but the ministry is out there. There's no place I wouldn't go. There's no place I haven't gone that I have been called to do what? Ministry. And when I go to do ministry, just like today, you don't have to pay me for ministry. You got to pay me to perform. But you don't have to pay. How can I charge somebody for what God has given me and instilled in me? Now, if you want to bless, I'll take the blessing. I have no problem. If you don't, I know who's going to bless me because I know where it all comes from. So if you can take those things out of your mind, I'm telling you, this walk is more simple. The reason when your walk becomes complicated or the places that you go become complicated is because people...
people have shown up with an agenda looking for position, power, or privilege. Here, we're just members of the servant. That's all we are. Just some, member, some members in the servant just trying to do what? Get better, stronger, and closer. And then, like my favorite saying is, go home. That's it. Go home. You ain't got to. I, I, I've had people around me that are so saved, sanctified, filled. And then nephew Tommy called them. And they lose it all. I've heard preachers lose their mind on a prank phone call. And I'm saying, where? Well, and I know I can't be pranked. I know I can't be pranked. Because you want to tell you why I can't be pranked? Let me tell you why I can't be pranked. Because I'm not, I'm not listening for all that stuff. First of all, as soon as you call me, hey, you, hey, you tell me, hey, you got a daughter? Who is this? If I can't, offend, I'm hanging up. So I'm going to cut my conversation short. Got time for all that nonsense. Y'all hear that Pastor H? Oh, man, that will cuss like a sailor. He cussed everybody on the phone. <laughs> so, if you keep your mind on things eternal, you might be able to pers persevere past those things. Amen. Here they saw community church membership and so If you want to be a member, all you have to do is fill out, I want to be a member. And answer two questions on the back. They're very simple. The first one is, why do you want to be a member? Because everyone should know why they want to be a member. And also, what ministry would you like to serve in? Because you should serve in some capacity because that brings you closer to God. Amen. We have Tuesday Town Hall every Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Sometimes it's here at the church and sometimes I am out of town. So I do it via go to meeting. But you are more than welcome to participate in that. And all you have to do is let me know and I'll put you on the list. And we will make sure that you get the text every week. Giving at Asar Community Church is simple. Members, you know what you need to do to keep your house in order. If you are a visitor, if you are a guest, if you want to sow into our ministry, you can fill out this envelope, place it in the containers, or you can give online at asawcc.org. That's it. Now, why would we not make a big deal about it? Because if you truly believe where God guides, God provides. He will provide. He told Abraham to take his son and go and sacrifice him. And he did it. And God made him everything that he became because of his obedience. And here at Esau, we're just trying to do the same thing. Be obedient. Be a cheerful giver. Whatever God lays on your heart, we would use that to keep these lights on, the doors open, and the ministry growing and helping those who are in need. Um, this week, we'll probably be um, taking care of the backpack kids here in Villarica. We'll probably be purchasing food either tomorrow or on Monday for that particular ministry. Um, God is doing some great things. Thank Val for coming. Appreciate you being here, uh, worshiping with us tonight. We're thankful for my wife, Amen. the children, Amen. Tyler, the appendix, uh, Nancy Petaway is watching in Texas, and Robin Evans. And I hope my brother in law is watching tonight since I did the Tuesday town hall for himself. Because he said, Man, when I go to church, I get tired of the preachers turning all these pages, and I get lost, and then I get confused. And I said, well, tune in Saturday. I'm going to be in one chapter. So, so God bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. Father God, we thank you for this another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for the word that has been preached, the songs that have been sung. Thank you for our business. Thank you for our membership, our families, and our friends, and our supporters. Continue to give us the resources we need to do the work that you have assigned our hands to do. Bless us now as we depart, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, and all that God's people said, amen. amen.
about to turn it off Facebook Live. Thank y'all for watching. Huh? You got any questions? <laughs> if you got a question, uh, send it to me. I'm gonna have to do some research because I don't, I, don't I don't have a lot of answers, but I will get yeah. My wife probably don't like that. She's like, you should have just turned it off. But I had some people say, hey man, you should stay on a little bit longer so that we can, um, you know, see people moving and talking. So that's it. So we'll see you next week. The Lord's will. If the creek don't rise. Right, Pauline? Woo! Oh, say what then? I don't know. People said some stuff. Let me see what they say. Sister Chance. Woo! My good friend, Sister Smith, Florian, all the way from California. <laughs> all right, Lord willing.